We are a team, and we go around doing these things wherever we can, and we do this one every year, usually right here. So you're really lucky, and this is a great turnout. I'm really glad everybody's here. It's nice to see all my old friends. And uh, so yeah, guerrilla skeptics, I thought that. It means kind of being subversive and getting under underground a little bit and not trying to be in everybody's face, but getting things done. So if you know about Susan, you know that she is a doer, okay? And in fact, it's, it's kind of frightening to me to think about years ago, we used to say, I'm tired of going places and listening to people talk about all this. Why don't they just do something, you know? Here we are, right, talking about it. But that's the only way to get people interested who may not know that there's another alternative to all the bullshit that's going on. So, without any further ado, here is my wonderful friend and forced to be reckoned with, Susan Gerbic. Thank you. Let me, let me turn on my... Uh, Lavier, thank you so much. You guys have all been wonderful helping out, helping out in all your ways. The, the, these conferences can't be done without them, but we are hoping to do a lot more conferences of this type in different areas. So please be in touch if you want to do this. Okay, so I decided I would do a talk this time. You can, you can dim the lights if you want a little bit. So, I mean, I'm not important, so just dim the lights, okay. All right. <laughs> I run this Wikipedia project and I decided I would do this talk. I have just come back from New Zealand and Australia. I did a whole series of talks to the New Zealand skeptics, the Australian skeptics, and so on. And um, I toured with a, a wonderful speaker who is a science, uh, she, she uh, is a scientist and she teaches critical thinking in community colleges. And she's been going on tour just recently to our community. Her name is Melanie Treasure King. And she saw my talk so many times because we did talks together. She'd do a talk, I'd do a talk. She saw it so many times that I just went into my hotel room on, on the last day and I started writing something different. So I put this together, almost nobody's seen it. I did it for uh, the Sydney skeptics and I just kind of did it on the whim. So I've only done this once, so let's hope it works out okay. So bear with me if not. Um, you're happy, I'm happy for you to take pictures of the screens. You will see words on the screen of Wikipedia pages. Just don't try to read the Wikipedia page. It's just, it's just there for a visual. But if you want to go back later, if you're taking notes or you want to take pictures of the screens, please do so and you can go back and read all about what I'm talking about today. Um, okay, so this is our nonprofit. This is the nonprofit that we're associated with Monterey County Skeptics. Um, we are a nonprofit, and these conferences do cost money to put on. This is probably, we probably spend $3,000 to put a conference like this on, and uh, a lot of it is donated. But we usually get it up, a lot of it in donations. We expect to lose money, we'd rather not lose a lot of money, but we will. And all the, all the AV that you see is ours, we bought it. So everything and a lot of the food and so on is donated. People, you know, I can't pay honorariums necessarily, but I will do my best to make sure everybody feels special, hopefully, that is here. So as that said, the abouttimeproject.org, you can find this on our website. It has a lot of information about a lot of the things I'm involved in, including Monterey County Skeptics and also this tiny little project called the Gorilla Skeptics on Wikipedia. So as Mark said, he did come up with the name of this Wikipedia, uh, this name. And we run a very small group of about 100 people located all over the world. Our mission is to change all Wikipedia pages concerning science, scientific skepticism, claims of the paranormal, people of science, and in all languages possible. So just a little tiny thing, right? <laughs> so we've been doing this a little over 10 years now, and I'm going to talk today about the importance of stories on Wikipedia. So I'm gonna ask you first, now, so hopefully you guys, anybody out there, okay, I should, maybe I should put this the other way. How many people out here do not know about the GSOW or the Girl Skepticism of Wikipedia project? Hands up, just as a gauge to kind of how many people are not really aware of what our project is. Okay, so it's only about five of you, so um, please come over and talk to if, if there's any confusion, please talk to any of the editors that are here. Hands up editors, Carmen, Adrian, 
Deborah, Leonard, okay, Greg's going through training. So there are people here who can answer your questions. And over here, Rick, too, hiding in the corner, he can raise his hand. Um, so um, anyway, so we are trying to change Wikipedia pages in all languages. Um, we're completely unique. This is not something that Wikipedia does. I've created all the training, all the training exercises. We've been doing this over 10 years. I uh, do all the training. I love training, absolutely adore training. And so this is like an homage back to the, the bigger goal of what our project's all about. So people have, um, I'm gonna ask a question again, a show of hands. How many people here have gone to Wikipedia to look up Wikipedia pages for towns, cities you're from? Places you've been to, okay, so about half the room. Places you've lived, places you've gone to. Sometimes they're very small towns, and, and it's very interesting what you'll find on a Wikipedia page. It's hit or miss, nobody's really in charge of Wikipedia. It's they, they talk about all the time, but there is no real they. They is us, only people who care, only people who are interested enough to write a Wikipedia page or to make it well, like with Adrian's project with the Winchester Mystery House and Sally Winchester, we have to be inspired to do it. There's no list. So people, sometimes you'll find a page that's in horrible shape, and sometimes you'll find it in wonderful shape, and somewhere in between. And that's only because of the love and the attention that the people who want to write the Wikipedia page will do it. Like I said, there's no list, there's nobody in charge, it's all a, a, a group thing. On some Wikipedia pages for cities and towns, villages, counties, you might find at the bottom of the page that there is an area that has no community. That's all that's important to me, is to grow our community in all the ways I can think of. And Wikipedia editors, a lot of them, start off as Wikipedia editors and then go on to something else. And it's usually something they've learned about because they've met other people who've helped them on their journey. They start podcasts, they start, they write books. They write articles, they do research. There's all kinds of things they do. But one of the things we'd like to be able to do is encourage more people to go into the sciences, STEM. And I, you know, I'm not, wasn't raised, I was raised in Salinas, born and raised, and still live in Salinas. I've always had a little bit of a stigma because I am not an academic. I, I'm a baby photographer for JC Penney's for 34 years. I've photographed all your kids, okay? That was my life. And so for me to be running an organization like this is just kind of surreal. It's that imposter syndrome everybody talks about. One of the things that's important is that we want more people, especially who are starting out in their lives, to think to themselves, oh, I can do that. They're not so different than I am. And one way I want to do this is I want people who are younger students, people who are starting out of their careers, to look at the Wikipedia pages of the places they're from, their schools, their, their villages, their towns, and see these people who are notable uh, listed on the Wikipedia page and say, wow, they went to my same high school? They did this? And then in a way what it will do is it will help them encourage and see themselves in a big picture way of maybe I can do that. Maybe I can go on to these other things. Maybe I could be a, uh, a senator. Maybe I can be a musician. Maybe I can do uh, great things. Maybe I can go into sciences because that's what we're focused on in my Wikipedia projects is people of science. And so what I do is when we write these Wikipedia pages, we want them to be well written but we don't gossip or anything on them, but we do want people to look and start at the top and read to the bottom. When you read a Wikipedia page written by one of my team members, that's what you should find, is that it's interesting, it tells a story. Again, no gossip, but it tells you a story. Um, so this is a Wikipedia page that I just grabbed, almost at random, it's Riverside Kingsbury Academy, and anybody who might be going to, it's in the Bronx of New York, so if anybody, is interested in that Wikipedia page, maybe they live in that town, they go to that school, that's their alumni, they might be interested in maybe going on and, uh, and seeing who else might be notable in their area. Any hands up, anybody has an idea who it might be? A lot of people know who the person is who's, who was on this Wikipedia page is notable. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson, he went to that high school. So he's he was a person who, you know, went to high school in this area and had no idea he would go on to be the illuminary, you know, taking on the role of uh, Carl Sagan and, and, um, and 
running the planetarium in uh, back where he is back east. But the idea is, is that I want students and I want people to find these, these names and so on. I call it leaving breadcrumbs. And it's just a thing I made up. It's not something official. And that's what we're trying to do with the Wikipedia pages we create, is we try to leave breadcrumbs. Hopefully nobody's going to eat them as they walk towards the... <laughs> the idea is you're supposed to be able to get back to the place you were. But I want to leave breadcrumbs. And so when we write Wikipedia pages, we put us a lot of breadcrumbs so that people will go, they'll start the page and they'll go, oh, that's interesting, and they'll go to the other, they'll go, like with the Winchester Mystery House, they might click on, who's Brian Dunning? Who's Joe Nickel? And those are breadcrumbs that will go from one place to another, to another, to another. And hopefully people will learn more about science, they'll learn more about the skeptic community, and they'll, they'll have a better, well-rounded information about the whole idea of what's going on in our community. So I call this leaving breadcrumbs, and it's very important. I like to leave, have our team leave breadcrumbs on cities and uh, schools in the hopes that some people will stumble across that name. So what we're going to do today um, is I'm going to pick this subject and I'm going to tell a story and hopefully you guys will all be engaged as we go. Hands up, I'm sure everybody. Somebody shout out, what is that? Which one? Hellbop, yes. This is Hellbop. So the comet Hellbop, you may remember, I'm sure most of us here were alive during the time, it was 1995. Everybody remember Hellbop? Yes. Some people saw it maybe? Yeah, some mumbling, yeah. Okay, so Comet Hellbop was a big deal, right? And I'm, I'm, you can read the Wikipedia page if you're interested in learning about it. I'm not going to be talking about Hellbop today. I'm going to be talking about Hell and Bop, right? That's who I'm going to talk about. And this is important to us because these are pages we wrote, not the Comet Hellbop, but we wrote the Wikipedia pages for Alan Hale. This is not the skipper from Gilligan's Island, Alan Hale. I know you're thinking that. Maybe has anybody seen them both in the same room at the same time? No. Okay. So this is Alan Hale, and then this is Thomas Bopp. And these are two people that are, they're both Americans. They both um, have a name on there. So we're going to talk about this in brief. Again, don't read all the content on the, on the, the screen. It's just there as a guide. Go back and read the Wikipedia page if you're really interested. Alan Hale, okay, I did talk briefly to you guys about photography, right? How awful it is we have hardly any photos of a lot of people. This is the best we got of Alan Hale. I mean, come on now. So somebody in um, New Mexico, actually Dave Thomas, a fellow of the Center for Inquiry, where I'm a fellow, Leonard's a fellow, um, Mark's a fellow of the Center for Inquiry. Uh, I'm sorry, Committee of Skeptical Inquiry. So um, what we what uh, Dave Thomas did is he has just happens to know Alan Hale and took a picture of him and I said please can I have that picture uploaded to Wikimedia Commons so we have something to put on a Wikipedia page for this guy because some people don't take pictures and they don't just don't do it so this is a photo uploaded by them so Alan Hale um, on his Wikipedia page I'm going to summarize some of the things we have written on the Wikipedia page and he said there was an entire generation that has come of age. Uh, come of age having never really seen the dark sky. And now Alan Hale um, and Thomas Bopp, there he is, Thomas Bopp, uh, that's the best picture we have of him. He has died, so we don't really have a lot of really great photographs of him either. And I know this isn't a story about how he has great uh, the photography in here, but it is important um, in the storytelling. So, uh, next, here we are. So these two fellows, these two men, they did not start out to have a comet named after them. They, it just happened by accident in both cases. Okay, so I'm sorry, I've only done this talk once before and it's been months. Okay, so what happens is these two gentlemen, they're astronomers, right? One is a professional astron astronomer. He's actually somebody who, who has, um, like uh, gone and has a degree in um, astrology, and they both served in the military. They both um, <laughs> ah, somebody's paying attention. They're paying attention. Okay. <laughs> so what happened with these guys is they were able to. Um, okay. So so what happens with Alan Hale is he's an ast astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> And he acci 
example, you know, he's out, he says that he got his passion, I think this is later on, I talk about it, he has his passion for, for astronomy um, because his father introduced it to him. He's very interested in astronomy and he, um, he lived overseas, I believe he's the one that lived in the Philippines for a while, and then he comes back, or it might have been the other guy, I can't quite remember, you'll have to read the page. He was born in Japan, his parents were in the Air Force, that's what it was. And so he developed a love of the skies then. And then Thomas Bopp, he went into, um, he was a, I think he got his degree in construction and accounting and, and different things like that. But he was always interested in the, in the sky because his father bought him a telescope, a little 10 inch telescope. And on the steps of their home, I believe it was in Arizona or New Mexico, they were able to see the sky. They were able to really see the sky well. And, and so his father talked to him about the meteor showers and so on. So they developed a love of astrology. Astronomy. Astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> Drink. No. <laughs> um, they developed a love of that just from, from there. And so these weren't people who were just like born into it in this, you know, brilliant, their parents were PhDs or anything like that. They just were guys that happened to be enjoying the sky. So Hale, oops, Hale, what happened with Hale is he's out with his buds and they're out into, and he, well, no, he isn't out with his buds. He's at home and he's looking through his telescope and, and, and you'll have to talk to, to Leonard about this, about the, the science of this, but he's looking through his telescope and he's seen comets before. So he knows what they look like. And he's checking it out, and you know, they plot it on, on paper or a computer or something, and they say, there, wow, that's something interesting. What's that doing there? It comes out really fuzzy. It's like a little fuzzy, a little like a little tiny Q-tip up in the sky, but not quite even that clear. And he thought, that's odd, that's really interesting. And what he did is he wrote it, he wrote an email to the organization in charge and said, I'm following this thing. Can you know, scientific method, can somebody somewhere else check to make sure that this is what you're seeing in a, in a place farther away? So that's what he did, he sent an email. Now Bob, he was out with his friends out in the desert, another astro astronomy, <laughs> the more I say it wrong, I the more I'm gonna say it wrong. Okay, so he's out with his buds out there and, and he'd never seen a comet before. So his friend had the telescope set up and he goes and he looks into it and he says, what's that fuzzy thing? And they're like, what fuzzy thing? And he goes, I don't know, there's something fuzzy there. And they're like, I don't know. So they're looking at it and they pull out all the maps and they're saying, that fuzzy thing ain't on here. And so they just watched it for hours and they're tracking this. And finally they said, you know what, that's a, I think it's a comet and it is far away. It's, it's not like the pictures you guys see, it's far, far away. It's very, very small. <laughs> and so what happens is he says, I guess I gotta alert somebody. And so this is 1995, I think. They don't have cell phone coverage in the desert. I mean, I don't know if they even have now. But so his, he, he says, I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna drive home. And he stops at a cell phone, not a cell phone, but a, you know, those things Superman changes into, the, the <laughs> telephone booths, some people remember those. <laughs> he goes in and he realizes he doesn't have the guy's, doesn't have the phone number. So he's like, oh, what am I supposed to do? So he goes home and instead of sending an email, the name of the organization that he reports it to is called something something telegraph. So he sends a telegram to the people that he's supposed to notify that he saw this thing. So his, so we don't know who actually saw Hale Bob first, but Hale gets his name first because he's the first to reach out and get the information. So don't send a telegram when an email will go, right, okay? <laughs> so that's the answer, but so that's why it's Hale Bop and not Bop Hale. That's why. So this is what happened to these guys. So all right, going back. So they did other things in life. Um, after they discovered this comet that would later be named Hale Bop, other things started happening to them. So Hale was able to go and uh, do a lot more lectures. As I said, he was a professional he was actually, you know, had a degree in it, and Bach was an amateur. And so these, these two people managed to, to do this amazing thing to have this comet named after him. Bach ended up touring a lot with his father. They went all over the place and did lots of lectures. And between the two people, they would take students out to see 
eclipses and different things that students probably would never have gone on their own to see. They would take school groups out and, and investigate things. In fact, that's where Thomas Bob and Alan Hell met each other. Is they, and I think it was in 2012, they went to um, um, Australia, back by Brisbane, which is where I was, when I gave, almost where I gave this talk. And they met each other there, and for the first time they met each other, like, you know, 20 years later. All right, where am I at here? So, now you might have heard of some, some interesting things that had happened with Hill Bob. I don't know if anybody knows where I'm going with this, but one of the things happened is that Alan Hill was asked in an article, one of the first articles done by the, by the media, is they interviewed him, and he jokingly said, he would meet the aliens when they land at Roswell and confront them for following his comet. Because you probably remember there was a rumor that there was a comet, there was that there was a spaceship traveling behind Hell Bob. And that was a rumor, and it was a conspiracy theory. And what happened is he joked about it. But what the reporter actually wrote was Hale said he will go to Roswell to meet the spacecraft when it lands. So he said he talked to the reporter for 45 minutes and this is what pretty much what the reporter said. Now we laugh, but there's a lot of danger in conspiracy theories. In fact, there's a lot of dangers in conspiracy theories that we can't even fathom. So you may remember this man. This is Doe, I believe this is Doe from Heaven's Gate. He actually came through Monterey County at one point. He was, he was a few blocks from my house, I didn't know that, recruiting members. Um, you can read a lot about Heaven's Gate on Wikipedia. There's interesting documentaries on it, fascinating about the people who follow Heaven's Gate. Not all people died at the, uh, in the crisis that we all learned about on the news at one time. A lot of people killed themselves after, even years after, because they wanted to go with the spacecraft. It was very sad, and uh, I think Yuhura's, um from Star Trek, I think her brother was one of the people who died in this. It was very, very awful what happened. But they believed that the spacecraft was following Hale Bob. They even returned, the, they got a telescope to look at it, and they couldn't find it, so they returned the telescope because it was something defective about the telescope because they couldn't find it. It was really, really sad. So when, it, when this happened, and, and Heaven's Gate happened, and people killed themselves, or unalived themselves, I suppose is what we're supposed to say at the moment, um, then Hale said at one of the rallies of uh, Freedom from Religion Foundation he, in 97, he said, another victory for ignorance and superstition. And so it was, it was devastating because it took all the media away from this wonderful scientific achievement by these two men who weren't necessarily aiming for fame or anything of the sort. And then this happened. Thomas Bopp said to National Geographic in 1997, this has been the worst and the best week of my life and the worst. And I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about, unless you've read the Wikipedia page. What had happened with Thomas Bopp is that, okay, so the, the hell Bopp is discovered, the media is alerted, people are interested, everybody's starting to follow it. And then, then it starts to be visible, where people, the average person can go and look at it in the sky. So Thomas Bopp and his, Thomas Bopp's brother and his brother's wife, so his brother and sister-in-law, went out to photograph it on the height of the visibility in the sky. And so they go out into this uh, dark area and they photograph it and they are so excited to see, you know, get great pictures of Hell Bopp, get in the car and come back and they die in a car accident. Oh on the way from seeing it. So it was like the best, week of his life because of course all of his fame, he's got a uh, comet named after him and then his brother and his sister-in-law die in a car crash immediately after photographing the, uh, the, the comet. I don't know any more details of it, I don't know if we need to know anymore, but you know, I don't know if it was like an accident because of they're on a dark road or an armadillo ran out in front of I don't know. So this is all information on the Wikipedia page. Now, what I'm showing you right now, this is the Wikipedia page for um, Alan Hale, and I don't, I, I wanted to just show you a quick visual. This is what the Wikipedia page looked like before my team was involved and wrote the Wikipedia page. And pretty much, this is it. This is the whole page. It has a little tiny sentence at the top, it has, what, eight citations, and it has a tiny little biography. So almost everything that I've told you about Thomas Bopp 
and almost all the information, um, and now this is where the Wikipedia page looks now. And I couldn't even create a screenshot of the entire Wikipedia page now. You'll have to go back and look. So this is before, eight citations, that's the entire page. And then this is the after when my team has created the Wikipedia page. And it has, I, I can't even see that number down there, 36 citations. And it has the pages so long and so in depth, but not so much in depth that you shouldn't be able to read it. It should still be interesting to you to read. This is the entire page for Thomas Bach. At least it had a photo on it, and that's saying a lot, because a lot of Wikipedia pages my team rewrites. Mostly our team, well, I shouldn't say mostly. We create brand new pages, which is very difficult to do because you have to pass a certain threshold of notability that is too difficult for me to explain to you right now. Mostly we rewrite stubs. So we pay, find pages like these that are crap and we give them some respectability by rewriting them. And also we make thousands of edits all the time. We're always editing and adding little bits here and there. So reverting uh, things. But the, like the thing that Adrian did was a complete rewrite. That took her a year. Um, some people can take, I can take eight hours and I can rewrite a page because I'm not going to read a whole book like Adrian does. <laughs> so I pick something a little different. I didn't rewrite this page. This is Thomas Bach's page before we were involved. Now this is just the citation section, 29 citations. And as you can imagine, if you'll, when you, on break, you might want to check it out and see it's a very long page. So um, I did go back and create these because I wanted to make sure that this was done correctly. To go back to my theme of the high school, I'm not gonna pronounce, that's in New Mexico. At the bottom of the Wikipedia page for the high school, it does have Alan Hill, co-discoverer of Common Hill Law. I did add that, um, and um, it wasn't there. Because I want, again, I want students that go to this high school to someday go, oh, what's going on at my high school? Nobody ever, you know, you've heard that phrase. <sighs> Nobody ever did anything big in my school. Nobody ever went to my, none of that. But in, in truth, some people do, and sometimes it's a good idea to inspire a new generation of people who want to go into science to say, this person went to my high school. How cool is that? You know, they went to the same cafeteria I went to, they went and did these things, and I might be able to do that too. And here you can see the um, Wikipedia page for the, this place in, in Tokyo where Alan Hale was born, I added that to the bottom of the Wikipedia page. Again, so somebody might look at the Wikipedia page for this, this town in uh, Tokyo, or this province, or whatever they call it there, and see that name and say, oh, maybe that's something I can uh, aspire to. Maybe I can get more information about it. And I did the same thing here to Cheney High School in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. I added Thomas Bach, and I said, amateur astronomer, co-discoverer of the Common Hell Bach, class of 1967. So that students, alumni, and so on will understand that these people came from their area. And I don't want to say amazing people, these amazing people. They're really just regular people who, are, who followed their passion in science, in this case. Not always, it's not always has to be science. But they followed their passion and were able to go and do something that ended up becoming a big thing. And it's, I want people to feel inspired when they read the Wikipedia work we've done. I know people, you know, having Adrian go first was, is a boom, so you guys get an idea of what my team does. But it also makes it sound like, you know, Adrian, she spent a year on this, and, and she is just, she did a phenomenal job. But you don't have to do, go to a year, and you can talk to Adrian a lot. You don't have to spend a year on this kind of stuff. Sometimes small changes add up. So we've been working since 2010, and I like this, helping students plagiarize since 2010. <laughs> we, you know, you're always warned to avoid Wikipedia. That's 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 old news. Everybody's going to go there. And even if you don't go to Wikipedia, you're going to get it from a Google search. You can ask Surrey, and she'll say the first couple lines of the Wikipedia page. You can go to Google, and on the side, it has a, like a summation of who the person is that you're looking up. It's directly from the first few lines of the Wikipedia pages. You could ask your neighbor about something, and they're going to have told you information they learned off the Wikipedia page. You can go to the media reports. They're copying our stuff almost verbatim. We know that. We can see that. We write a sentence that's a little bit odd, 
and then it appears in the media somewhere. They're plagiarizing our stuff, and we know kids are doing it too. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that they're plagiarizing the best stuff. <laughs> we want to give them really the good stuff. Let's give them the yeah. science. I want them to, when they have to write a report on somebody in New Mexico and they pick this guy, you know, Thomas Bach, they go read the Wikipedia page and they're telling the same story as I am because they just read it off the Wikipedia page. I don't care. It's real. If you go to the citations at the bottom, that's where you follow to get the real information. So we've been doing this for a very long time. And I just, the next slide, I like data, not just because I like Kyle, but I like data. <laughs> so it's very important in activism. And in fact, it was Jay Diamond who gave me this idea years ago. He said, so you've got this Wikipedia project thing. What is it, what, how do you know when, if you're having any impact, you know? <laughs> So Jay's like, so what? <laughs> what? How do you know when you had an impact? How do you track this? And that's right. As skeptics, we should know how we sh you should try to figure out how do you know if you're having an impact. So so he said, well, maybe there's some way of doing it, you knowing the numbers or something. And I said, well, we only have one stat, and the stat that we have, and it's it's something that's like a I don't know, it's kind of hard to use and it's difficult. And it tells us when a Wikipedia page has been opened. You know, you can, somebody clicks on it, then a, somewhere a counter goes up in some heavenly place or something, all counter changes. <laughs> we don't know how long the person's on the page. We don't know if they read the entire thing. We don't know if they're off in seconds. We don't know if they are the same person going back day after day. We don't know. That's the only stat we have. So I asked Kyle, because he's such a good guy. I said, Kyle, is there something we could do to be able to do this so that my team can see how our stats are, so we can satisfy this Jay Diamond person up here <laughs> who, uh, you know, who's asking me a very good question of how do you know when you're, when you're done? How do you know when you finish? How do you know if you're having an impact? And Kyle said, let me think about that. And he comes back and he writes some par a program for me and, and Mark named it Stat Badger because Mark comes up with all the names. And he, he named it Stat Badger. And what we're able to do is it's a hidden program. You guys can't look at it unless you're part of my team. Um, we're able to input every time we write a page. No, we never write a stub. Never write stubs. We only write full pages. So when we write a full page, we can add it to Stat Badger. If it falls under the umbrella of science, scientific skepticism, claims of the paranormal, or um, people of science. Or if we take a page like Thomas Box or, or Alan Hales and we rewrite it completely, like we go through, oh, Carolyn's over here too. Yeah, she's another one of my editors. Just happen to see you. You're just in the sunlight wrong, so I can't see. So the um, Wikipedia page, if you, if we look at if you look at it and it's completely rewritten from top to bottom, that means all the citations have been reformatted. We've gone through the citations to make sure they're correct. We've redone it, putting in good code, and uh, rewritten the page. Gone through all the, in other words, a complete rewrite, like what Adrian did. Those pages can go on Stat Badger. But if we go in and make an edit, like I did to those high school pages where I'm putting in a couple lines. No, and we do a lot of that, but that does not count. Most of our work is just little bits like that, where we go in and correct things, revert things and stuff. So to answer Jay's question, how do you know if you're having an impact, even if we don't know with the parameters I said, how many times a person's gone there, if they're there for seconds or what, we have to have, we have a number, because I can put those in and I can track the pages we've worked on. So here's our impact as of this morning. 156,160,406 times our Wikipedia pages have been viewed. That's my team's. I am, I am so thrilled that I, a baby photographer at JC Pitties, have a team of people who have over 10 years have been following my work and, and training with me. I, I don't know how to code, but I've, I've taught myself what I can. Um, we have written 2,189 pages. 
and that is a lot of pages. And I know it's impossible. The task ahead of us is insanely crazy. The idea of rewriting the entire Wikipedia in all languages possible. 45% of the work we do is in languages outside of English. And I'm so proud of that because pseudoscience does not stop at a language barrier. Misinformation is global. And people of science, we want to be inspired by people of science in, in, in Japan and people of science in, in the Czech Republic and in Mexico and in Peru and all over the world. Science is a universal language. Same as mathematics. Well, I guess some people would say they're the same. But it's important to be inspired by each other and by the little thing that I'm doing by training these amazing people who follow and have joined my Wikipedia project and have trained with me. I've trained them, which is amazing. They always go on and do more better things than I do. But the idea that they're doing this is, I, it fills me with joy and pride every day. And when I look at these numbers, I'm amazed. As Adrian said, how many, how many of those are yours? Seven, uh, 700,000? No, I've got 2 million. Oh, her pages she's written. She's got 2 million views. She's written the page for um, spirit photography. She's written the page for haunted house. If you look at the haunted house page, this woman is a math, math professor and an expert on Tourette syndrome, and she spends all her time on ghost stuff. It's really funny. <laughs> and so uh, Carolyn's written a page. Uh, Leonard's written a page. Rick's, I mean, everybody's, you know, and the team has to write pages. That's just what we do. And I'm so inspired by them. And I think, oh my gosh, I just wrote the, the Wikipedia page for the Magic Castle. But it will not go on Stat Badger because it was not uh, under the, the, the Stat Badger thing. But I just did that just because I was annoyed by it, how bad it was written. So I, if you want to take a picture of the screen so that you understand to go back and learn more about this amazing project I have, you have to be on Facebook. No way I can train you if you're not on Facebook. It takes about four months to finish my training. And it is powerful. You can work behind the scenes if you want to and do activism in your sleep. We were so busy during the pandemic. You have no idea. We wrote lots and lots of pages on vaccines and vaccine um, nonsense. If you had noticed in the news, like the 12 most dangerous people who are giving out the most dangerous information about um, uh, vaccines, I think the New York Times did a big splash about it, the 12 most people out there. I think we wrote nine of those pages. And some of them we wrote them in languages outside of English. And they got millions of views. So we were able to educate people. Oh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., have anybody heard of that guy? That guy. So his organization, Children's Health Defense, I get children, health, defense, sounds good, right? It's an anti-vax, anti-fluoridation, anti-all kinds of stuff organization. Uh, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, one of my editors in, in Canada, he wrote the Wikipedia page in English and French. It didn't even exist before. It's almost, I think it's a little over 500,000 views already. And people are getting information, real information. Hopefully we're gonna tank his career, I hope. But he, John, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is so pissed off. And in and, and another talk I give, I talk about vaccines and the work we've done. He's, his website is like, I'm, they've been trying to change the Wikipedia page and, and give Wikipedia the correct information to inform people. But these Wikipedia people won't take our advice. And it's like, yes, you know, yeah. I'm like, I'm just a baby photographer at JC Penney's and I have more power than you? Awesome, okay, that feels good. So this is my presentation. I don't know if I have time for questions um, because I need to look at my phone to see what's next, who's next. And I hope, oh, Kyle, uh, we have to have Greg up next. So I thank you, we will not do questions so we can stay on time, so we can get to lunch, and thank you guys so much for coming.